So in this segment, we're going to talk about Brexit blamed as UK misses out on global trade rebound. So global trade is picking up back towards pre-pandemic levels, but uh, there is clearly one country that uh, is not doing is not going back to pre-pandemic levels. That is Great Britain. So, or should I say the UK? It's a collection of countries, really, but um, you get my point. UK exports have underperformed the rest of the world in what experts said was a sign that Brexit might be limiting the country's trade performance, which, again, you don't need an expert to figure that one out. Once you put in trade restrictions, it's obviously going to have a chilling effect on trade, and that's without the UK even starting to do physical inspections of EU goods, which the UK are mulling over um, delaying further. The volume of UK goods exports fell by 14% in the three months to January, compared with the same period in 2020. Before the pandemic, according to the World Trade Monitor published on Friday by the Netherlands Bureau for Economic Policy Analysis, this was in stark contrast to the global average of an 8.2% rise over the same period, so the UK's trade uh, dropping off whilst global trade is um, improving. The data, which incorporates ONS uh, data, that's from the UK, for the UK, also showed that Britain compared poorly with the performance of all advanced countries where goods exports rose by 5%. So you're talking about developed nations. The analysis also showed that the UK was underperforming over the long term, as it was the only country tracked by the CPB where goods exports remained below the 2010 average, which is quite crazy considering um, 2010 would add much lower trade numbers. Uh, whilst most other advanced countries have seen a strong recovery in trade, UK exports remain below the pre-pandemic levels, said Jonathan Ports, Professor of the Economics at King's College London. So you can see um, the world in dark blue. Um, you've got advanced economies, so it'd be typically probably G7 or G20 countries. Um, it depends how you define advanced economies. So you've got you know everyone's trade dips because of the pandemic. Um, it did hit certain countries earlier, but you can see around the same period, 2020, um, it hit us. You know, China obviously would be part of the, I think, the earlier um, part of the dip as well, because China was impacted quite a lot, and they are a massive um, exporter in the world. But you can see, you know, the world's imports kind of pick up very dramatically, very quickly. You've got the uh, advanced economies, and then you've got the UK. So you can see here, it spikes quite heavily. Um, in terms of ex it would be uh, in terms of trade uh, so in terms of exports purely because of you know before the import checks were put in place by the EU there was um, a lot of stockpiling by I think EU countries trying to get ahead of the um, the import checks and you got a massive drop off uh, in towards I'm assuming that's March when countries got more used to the uh, checks and the paperwork so you got a big spike you got a big drop off um, which I think that'd be due down to the second wave I think but it's interesting that you know other EU, uh, sorry, other economies weren't hit so badly by you know the second wave, amongst other things. Uh, you got a significant pickup again towards Christmas, the end of the year, and then you've got a drop off again. So it's very interesting these uh, numbers, especially when. So we haven't got January actually. We've got Christmas and probably the first bit of January. I'm assuming this is. So, what can we see from this? You can see the Brexit impacts quite clearly. The government can't deny, even Sunak's kind of admitted it low-key, which we'll talk about when we get there. This week, the OBR warned the UK uh, trade lagged behind other domestic economy, while, uh, sorry, UK trade lagged behind the domestic economy recovery and had missed out on much of the recovery in global trade, suggesting that Brexit may have been a factor, which I don't know why the OBR trying to sugarcoat it definitely was a factor. Makes sense. Um, you know, the EU did um, import checks straight away after Brexit and it's going to put EU member states in a really awkward position of, all right, I'm trying to get this thing. It's stuck in the Dover Calais crossing or it's stuck in Rotterdam. I can't function like this. I need to look for a new supplier, which again, EU member states have loads of countries to get um, goods from. The UK doesn't have that luxury. Um, as a result, the UK has become a less trade intensive economy, which again, cost jobs. You know, when you, um, when manufacturers make less stuff, you need less people. Um, which means you're going to cut the um, amount of people you have working for you, which was expected to knock out 4% of its productivity over the next, which is going to knock um, knock, uh, knock out 4% of its productivity over the next four, 15 years, it added. And, you know, manufacturing jobs are typically better paid than things like, you know, um, your average retail job, for example. So that's the UK losing well-paid jobs again. 
The OBR noted none of the free trade agreements or other regulatory changes announced would be sufficient because they don't do anything to have a material impact on uh, its forecast for UK trade because the trade deal so far have added 0.02% and worst case scenario is minus 0.02% to our GDP, which is nothing. It has estimated that leaving the EU would result in the total UK exports and uh, imports being 15% lower than if the UK had remained a part of the EU. And you can see again, look, maximum from uh, the G7 countries excluding the UK. So that's the uh, trade intensity. You can see it's very high. And in the um, the minimum, so I think this will be like the average between the two. So you've got the highest uh, G7 member and the lowest G7 member and the UK being way below them. Way below them in terms of that. Earlier in the month, Michael Saunders, external member of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, said Brexit had reduced the economy's openness in trade and labour mobility. So you've got trade in terms of free movement of goods and labour in terms of free movement of people, which is ironic considering Andrew Bailey is a big Brexiteer. How's that going for you, Chief? Because apparently not going so great. Which lowered the extent to which capacity pressures could be eased by imports and immigration because we decided to take back control and we made things worse for ourselves, even though we had control in the first place. A fortnightly ONS survey published on Thursday showed that more than half of UK businesses that had changed their supply chain had switched to more domestic sourcing since the end of Brexit transition period. So essentially, UK businesses are looking for more UK sources because they don't want things to get stuck at the border. Yeah, I know the highlight has gone, which is annoying. Um, I've probably talked about my frustrations about that in a live stream or something but the simple fact is it makes sense but you've got to assume that EU suppliers given the fact that the EU are doing physical checks on goods and other things uh, making sure everything's up to spec it'd be far harder to get UK exports into the EU than the other way around um, so you've got, you, we know that the EU, EU countries and companies are doing the same things which are looking for other EU member states um, when necessary Paul Dales, chief ex uh, chief economist at Capital Economics, said the UK trade data was complicated by changes in methodology and methodologies. But then again, you can backtrack and look over other data, you know, older data through your new methodology. It's not a problem. Something Gamers Nexus does all the time with um, uh, computer hardware. But the bigger picture was that exports were still struggling to recover from Brexit and the pandemic, which you know again doesn't make sense. You know, other countries have come back from the pandemic. We've seen that in this article. Uh, Paul Dales, what are you talking about? Gabriella Dickens, economist at Pantheon Micro uh, Macroeconomics, backed the OBR's view that the trade would remain weak in the medium term. Exports, export growth looked to set remain set to remain sluggish, and you know the UK government can talk about um, emerging markets. Where are they? Much further away. Have to go through um, paperwork and other things. You also have a language barrier on top of that, depending on which other nations you want to send goods to. That's another problem because, you know, not every other country speaks English or their paperwork won't always be in English. So it's just ridiculous. Um, she goes on to say exporters um, to remain sluggish, to be slowly cut out of global supply chains, which is happening. Um, even in um, the UK, Northern Ireland is, cut it, is cutting GB out of its supply chains, which is going to happen. It's a good point due to the extra administrative burden for EU firms of sourcing goods from Britain. It's also having a massive effect on services as well, which we'll talk about um, in another video. But the simple fact is, what you can gather from this is that the UK is being cut out of supply chains, which is going to have a dramatic effect. And essentially, we um, our trade has dropped off significantly compared to the rest of the world and um, developed countries because of brexit you can see it in the numbers it's not hard other countries have come back we haven't if we go to what the uk's actual strategy on this i've nicked this from someone on twitter which is shout when uh, the numbers go up ignore when the numbers go down shout when the numbers go up ignore shout ignore which is the uk strategy for dealing with this the tory strategy yeah things are going great don't silence yeah silence yeah silence so it doesn't surprise me one bit you know old man yells at clouds essentially but anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.